Welcome back and the uh, course on fundamentals. Um, this particular uh, uh, area is going to focus on restorative material options for indirect restorations. This will influence your decisions on the tooth preparation design you're considering. So our ultimate goal, of course, is to mimic tooth structure. Then we're dependent on not only the restored materials, but the hands that are going to be using uh, or fabricating the, the restorations. So either you're dependent on you, your staff, if you're doing it uh, in your office or a dental laboratory. So here I show you the final outcome before I show you the actual tooth preparations because our, our goal is to uh, mimic tooth structure. So whether it's a crown or a veneer, so partial coverage versus full coverage, uh, the upper teeth are restored, the lower teeth are natural, the goal is to mimic uh, uh, the, the natural tooth structure. Once you see the tooth preparation, I think we all realize we have to vary our preparation based on our discoloration. Because now I need to change the restorative material to mask severe discoloration, where on teeth that are veneered, I may be able to use more translucent materials. Considering partial coverage first, veneers, and I'm looking at monolithic restoration, so stain and glazed, I have an option of a felspathic or glass ceramic material, a very weak veneer, 80 megapascals in strength, but maybe and arguably the most aesthetic, because I'm calling this monolithic even though the technician can layer different colors and translucencies to fabricate it, but it's 100% the same material. Then we get into lucite reinforced glass ceramic, Empress type materials, lithium desilicate, Emax type materials, and then translucent zirconia materials, which have to be manufactured by CAD CAM. Increasing aesthetics as we go up the list, increasing strength as I go down the list. Monolithic means applying surface stains, and over the top of that, a surface glaze. So over a period of time, that can wear off. Some of the research is showing as early as eight to 10 years, the, um, those surface stains can begin to be diminished, and yet we're discussing veneers at an 83% survival rate at 20 years. So if you're doing monolithic restorations, maybe a staining glaze is less expensive today, but maybe not as long-lasting from an aesthetic perspective. When you get into bilayered veneers, the weak link is always the layering material that goes over the top of the substrate. That layering material is 80 megapascals in strength, felspathic or glass ceramic materials. I'm now including, again, felspathic and glass ceramic as a layered material, because again, it can be layered as I've already discussed, but it is monolithic because it's 100% the same material. But now the lucite, lithium desilicate, and some manufacturers allow translucent zirconias to be layered with this 80 megapascal layering material. And again, specifically manufactured by individual manufacturers for their own materials. Looking at the layering, you can have a micro layer of three tenths. You can have five tenths of a millimeter of the veneer material facially only, half of the incisal edge or overlapping the incisal edge. The more layering materials you use, you increase aesthetics, but you decrease the strength because the 80 megapascal strong material on the functioning edge. So next we will move into crowns, but that completes our discussions on materials for veneers.